Manly P. Hall was not only a personal friend of mine that I used to go to his home, but when he passed away in his will, I was called uh, by um, Obadiah Harris, who was at that time the president and chairman of the board of the Manly P. Hall Philosophical Research Society. It's a big university in Los Angeles on Los Feliz Street. And I got a phone call. I was working at the Truth Seeker Company in San Diego. And, uh, and uh, Obadiah said, Jordan, Mr. Hall left a will and you are in it. Uh, and he has left you something <clears throat> very valuable and he wanted you to have it. And I said, Obadiah, what did he leave me? He said, I'm not going to tell you. You just come up here and you'll see it. So I immediately got in my car that day and drove up to Los Angeles from San Diego and went over because I've been to Mr. Hall's library uh, hundreds of times just over the years I've been there and used to go there on Sundays and hear Mr. Uh, Hall's lectures and talks. I was fascinated by the brilliance. This is what I've been looking for all my life, somebody who had the answers somebody who knew what the words meant and broke down the etymology of the concepts of where these ideas have come from. Well, that was the tremendous work Mr. Hall had done. And so when I got there to find out what he had left me, <clears throat> in his will, Mr. Hall left me all of his research volumes. Uh, they were his research journals. And there was, there was, I don't even know, maybe 100, 150 of them, uh, beautiful journals with all of his research in them. And going all the way back to 1936 to the, you know, to the day he passed. And he left it all no present to me. And so that shocked me. I was actually rather taken back. I was shocked at such a phenomenal uh, 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 you know, a treasure Mr. Hall would personally leave to me in his will. And so I not only knew Mr. Hall personally, I, I, I used to, as a matter of fact, but just a, uh, a few months before he passed away, mm -hmm. I gave him an award. I was part of an organization called US of A, United Sensitives of America. And I was on the governing body of the of the organization, and it was a group, a large group of of different uh, what we call sensitives, uh, psychics, researchers, historians, numerologists, all kinds of interesting people. Some of them writers for television, etc., on esoteric and occult subjects. And I was on the I was on the board of directors with that organization. And so we had a big, oh, every year we would have a big fun, oh, we'd have, not, not a fundraiser, but we'd have a big award dinner where we would give awards to certain people who have done, um, you know, very big things for the human family, uh, teachers and lecturers and, and researchers, et cetera. And so uh, I suggested Mr. Hall, and we did, we did uh, give him an award, and he was there that night. And I was so absolutely delighted I was able to introduce Mr. Hall, my dear friend, and uh, not knowing that he was leaving me his, his, all his research journals and the will. But, uh, yes, I knew Mr. Hall, and he was an incredibly brilliant man. I do believe, and it's just my, my personal belief, that Mr. Hall was probably one of the uh, uh, one of the most incredible spiritual minds that has ever visited our earth. This man uh, could speak for hours upon hours on all the intricacies of religion, theologies, concepts, and belief systems of where they came from and what they meant and how to understand them in relation to today's world. And he's, my God, he must have written 50 or 60 books and hundreds and hundreds of articles and, and given thousands of lectures, 
quite literally around the world and through his own uh, college and university. Uh, the man was an astoundingly brilliant, uh, you know, in theories and understanding religions and government and historians. Uh, there's no one like him. There's never been anyone like him. Right. And we talk about the great philosophers of the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans and uh, and all of that. But as far as I'm concerned, there's nobody came close to Mr. Manley P. Hall, who was a brilliant and wonderful and dear man. And he was a dear friend of mine. And so uh, I, I'm just amazed that I even got to know him. But he was the answer a long time ago to I knew that there was information out there in the world and I wanted it so bad as the scripture says knock and it will be open and seek and you will find ask and it will be given well I was seeking and knocking and going to every church I could every group every every research society every uh, wherever I could go to hear speakers explain to me the world I live in Nobody ever accomplished that. Nobody ever knew enough to tell me anything. So I was just wasting my young years going to churches where nobody knew what they were doing. Nobody had the faintest idea about what I'm talking about until I met Mr. Hall, who that's all he did was explain the world to you. Everything, where all the religions have come from, uh, where all the philosophies came from, what they meant, what the words meant, the etymology of the terms. Uh, it was such an extraordinary experience. And from there, that was in my, uh, my 18, 19 year old. And then from there, I began to go deeply. Now that I have, uh, now that I know the basics, now I know what's going on here and I understand the lies and the deception that the world believes because they don't know this is why I feel like I said before if you go to a church today people will ask you oh are you a believer yes I'm a believer and so oh well how long have you been a believer and so they have books in, in, in church libraries and church bookstores called uh, with the term believer in it. A lot of the books are called Believers, House of Faith, or Believers This, or Believers That. It implies you believe something, which implies you don't know anything, but you believe something. I don't want to believe. I have been too often, too often, I have been misled. Why? Because I didn't know. And I thought that these people who were older than me, they have white and gray hair, and I assumed they were the teachers. Mm -hmm. I listened to them, and then I would ask them questions, and then they would look at me as a child like a deer in the headlights of a car. They had no idea what I'm talking about. Right. And so, therefore, like Albert Einstein said one time in one of his books, he said, the teachers used to tell us that we had to answer their questions. But I asked, how come you can't answer our questions? And that's what I felt. I have questions that the, that the teachers of religion couldn't answer. Why? Because they're too simple-minded. Just a child would think of them. And I would ask certain, i just ask a question, and the priest would look at me like I'm a fool. I've got three heads because he didn't know what the, he didn't know how to answer the question. I would ask my parents. I would ask people all around me, adults. Nobody seemed to know what they were doing. And so, therefore, I pretty much assumed that grown-ups are just grown-up in body, but in their minds, they're still children. They don't know anything. I want to know. I want to prove it. I want somebody to show me what it is that's happening and prove it to me so I can understand it correctly. And that you're not going to get in any church or any synagogue or any temple or any uh, or any Islamic temple. You're not going to get that anywhere in the religious community of this world because the truth is not in religions. Right. There is no truth in religions. It's a belief system. But once you get past that and wake up and now begin to mature, not just your body, but your mind. 
and begin to question things. And if you really want to know, and if you're intellectually honest and are ready to hear the real truth, it's out there. All you need to do <clears throat> is just go ask, and it will be given. Knock, and it will be open. Seek, and you will find. Right. And what but, was really interesting about uh, about Mr. Hall is that he had, you know, people to point to the patronage he had, which was extremely helpful in collecting uh, the, the baseline of what he collected in that library for certain. Um, but <clears throat> the fact is this guy knew where to go, too. He traveled all over the world, even during the time of the Depression, when the Depression was oh, worldwide. Yeah. It wasn't just in America. And he went and found some very unique things that are in that library. Uh, oh, did he ever. Yeah. It, was, it was enormous. <clears throat> His personal library, if you've ever been to the Philosophical Research Society, which is a university-type uh, school that Mr. Hall set up, <clears throat> and he had his own personal library, which was a, a, a two-story two high uh, wa uh, walls and walls and walls of reference books from all over the world on every subject you can imagine. But that was the public side of his personal library. He allowed the public to see. But if you go behind the scenes, he had another library at PRS that nobody gets to see. And it was his personal library, which is, again, filled with walls of, of massive volumes. And there was very, I couldn't think of a subject that asked him that he could not sit down for 90 minutes to two hours and explain it in minute detail and show you exactly where things have come from, exactly what the words meant in the ancient Roman Empire, as opposed to the Babylonian Empire and what these words and terms and ideas and phrases that you hear today in religions where they actually came from and they don't mean what you thought they did. And boy, when I started waking up to the fact that, man, there has been a world of knowledge hidden from the human family. My God, how much that you don't know that you've never been told that is overwhelming and obvious when somebody <clears throat> finally shows it to you.